And now the next lecture will be given by Professor Anufrim, Anufriev, uh, Ballistic Heat Conduction and Semiconductor Nanowires. Yes, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to um, uh, give this talk here because actually um, Polytechnical University is my alma mater. I graduated 10 years ago, uh, so yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Can you hear my voice? Great. So my name is uh, Roman Anufriev. Uh, I will do my best to put us back on you know, time track. Uh, basically, I'm working in the University of Tokyo in Japan. And uh, today I will present uh, my experimental work on ballistic heat conduction in semiconductor nanowires. Um, this is our university. And uh, basically, I will start with some backgrounds, but they were introduced already a little bit by previous uh, speakers. And I will present you two experiments uh, that are probing ballistic conduction in like straight nanowires and serpentine nanowires. These two methods are independent ways to probe uh, ballistic conduction. So hopefully I'll be able to convince you that, uh, <laughs> that it exists. Well, at least it's kind of probable and it, it is possible to feel it in the actual real experiment. And maybe a little bit of simulations and maybe I'll skip the last part then. So, um, like when we talk about the heat conduction, usually we imagine like somewhat a diffusive process on the macro scale. Uh, however, as each phonon is, can be re like represented as a particle of um, lattice vibration, uh, it has a mean free path, which is usually estimated in silicon at room temperature, for example, as about uh, 10 to hundreds of like nanometers, uh, which means that at nanoscale, we should feel like uh, the Phonons actually moving as a particle, so-called ballistically. And uh, since uh, if we probe a heat conduction in the nanostructures of this small scale, we should be able to feel almost like no resistance or at least reduced resistance as compared to a bulk conduction. Uh, that is why we are interested to study the nanowires because a typical experiment uh, that uh, demonstrates some um, like a ballistic conduction is the uh, measure something as a function of its length. Consider um, the regular nanowire, like a simplified square shaped nanowire, and it uh, has a length L. And just by definition of thermal conductivity, uh, it's just conductance uh, multiplied by the length, right? Like normalized by the cross section. So in case of ballistic conductions, some phonons just experience uh, no, um, you know, no diffuse scatterings on the interface but rather experience some um, specular scattering or no scattering at all. In this case, we have a reduced, um, reduced um, re resistance of such a structure. And particularly in ideal case where all phonons experience like no resistance, the resistance goes to constant. In this case, this uh, formula simply collapses to the thermal conductivity proportional to the length. And that's what we, how we can probe in the experiment that actually, you know, we have some kind of ballistic contribution. Of course, it's never ideally like proportional to L, but it can be L power alpha as, for, as introduced by Professor Xiong. Um, yes, so this is how we aim to probe ballistic heat conduction. To do so, we use a um, top-down fabrication process to fabricate our samples on silicon on insulator wafers. Uh, basically, we start with insulator and using e -beam uh, lithography, we pattern aluminum square pods, which will serve later as a heater and the detector of our system. Then we draw kind of um, nanowires around this pod so that this part is kind of on the island, which is supported by these nanowires. And then we are using like vapor, tricky vapor etching to etch out the sacrificial layer so that we have a suspended bridge structure like this. And we have a, like a, the island suspended on the nanowire. So the only way for heat to escape from the center is to pass through the nanowire and feel its resistance. Uh, there is a big advantage of this method as compared to measuring actual grown nanowires is that on one wafer, I can have uh, hundreds of these kind of samples. So I have like um, three copies of each structure in this talk and many complementary data sets that prove the same thing. So every time I show like a data point, it's actually measurements on at least three identical structures. And uh, yeah, the error bars show the standard deviation of the measurements. 
So the actual structure looks like this. Um, it's a nanowire supported like air bridge structure with aluminum here. We will study a, a bit of different shapes. And what I want to emphasize is the quality of the fabrication. This is top view. Uh, and if we look with the transmission electron microscope on the edge of this nanowire, we will see that the roughness of this structure is about of atomic lattice. If you have a good monitor, you can see the uh, kind of atomic lattices here. So the our like nanowire is pretty smooth. I mean, on top and bottom, it's polished wafer, so it's uh, totally flat. And uh, on the our RA allows us to fabricate rather smooth nanowires still. Um, so let me show you some experiment. Uh, so by, by the way, yes, we are using micro time domain thermoreflectance method to probe the heat properties. The method is fairly simple. Uh, maybe there is a pump and probe lasers that uh, bring the heat to the center of the structure and probe the temperature on this island. And uh, so when the pump pulse comes, the probe signal detects that bump. Uh, we heat up this island and then the heat gradually spreads through the island to the heat sink. So by monitoring this curve, we're fitting it with exponent. We can basically measure how quickly heat spreads through the nanowire that we want to measure. And this give, give, gives us like thermal decay time, it's tau. It's a very important quantity. It means like longer time, the more resistive is our wire. The shorter time, the faster heat can spread, okay? Um, yes, and we have a cryostat, by the way. The cryostat uh, will allow us to um, measure heat conduction in the long temperature range from 4K to more, more like room temperature in this type. Um, and then from this measurement, we can extract actually thermal conductivity by using um, finite element method uh, simulations. We basically simulate exactly the same experiment and then on, like we have a fitting of our curve with different parameters of thermal conductivity. We can see that only one of them actually fits the experiment. It's a one like 45 watt per meter K here. So we kind of say, okay, then the thermal conductivity of the structure must be 45 watt per meter K. So thermal conductivity is like a sweet parameter, like a free parameter in the simulation. Of course, it's like automated process. It's not like I'm looking at the curve and decide which one fits. It's like fully automated, but the principle is this. So the experimental result. Uh, first, let us start from the very low temperature where we expect the longest mean free path of phonons where we have like longest uh, phonon wavelengths and everything is supposed to be more ballistic than ever. Uh, we measure thermal conductivity as a function of nanowire length. We probe a bunch of different nanowires with different lengths. And so we can see that while thermal conductivity of long nanowires is somewhat constant, we will put it to one, like to normalize it. We can see that uh, thermal conductivity of shorter nanowires deviates from this trend and becomes length dependent with L power alpha, as uh, Professor Xiong explained in the previous talk. This alpha coefficient basically tells us like whether we have a diffusive or ballistic or super diffusive or what I call quasi-ballistic is the same as super diffusive kind of um, regime, right? So, and um, if we analyze this alpha and extract it from these data points, we can see this, this kind of curve that um, alpha is a, the biggest alpha is for shortest wires and then it kind of uh, becomes weaker and weaker and weaker until it gets to zero or like oscillations around zero. It's not real oscillations, of course, it's just experimental error. I mean, it has to be zero. Um, yes. So this is what we can see that alpha of around like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I mean, roughly speaking, very roughly, like the heat conduction that we observe is like 30% ballistic or like quasi ballistic, uh, with like one being perfectly ballistic and zero perfectly diffusive. That is an important conclusion here, and it is a 4K because uh, in many papers you can see that they measure nanowires and they obtain like one. Alpha equal one, perfectly ballistic at room temperature. This is something that is very hard to reproduce with the um, statistically reliable study, I would say. So now let us increase temperature and see what will happen. So this is what we have, what we just measured at 4K. But as we increase the temperature to 100, to 200, and 300K, we can see that this curve 
like flattens and become like this tail becomes more and more flat and, and uh, almost flat at 300 K. Uh, obviously the arrow bar also grows at higher temperature, but still some kind of tail we can see even at room temperature, even though it's not so strong. But clearly um, heat conduction becomes less and less diffusive as we increase the temperature, which is logical. Well, because we uh, reduce the wavelengths of phonons and we reduce the mean free path. So heat conduction becomes less diffusive. And at room temperature, it's really like 10% diffusive, uh, maybe 15% diffusive. Nothing close to like 100%, uh, I mean, sorry, ballistic, 100% ballistic transport as sometimes is like, you know, reported in literature. Uh, in terms of, we can replot this data in terms of thermal resistance because it's very important to demonstrate that it's not due to kind of contact resistance that we have. Even though it's optical method, sometimes kind of resistance might be the problem. We can see the same thing basically that uh, long nanowires follow the trend for perfectly like proportional to L, which means like diffusive regime, but uh, short nanowires deviate from this linear dependence of resistance on length. And basically the higher temperature, the lower the temperature, the more it deviates from the, this L trend, which also proves the same point basically that it uh, seems more and more diffuse, ballistic, sorry, at, room t at low temperature. Um, in the next experiment, we will try to probe ballistic conduction differently. Because in previous experiments, the problem is we're kind of cooking up the thermal conductivity, which is already obtained from some simulation, I mean, experiment coupled with console simulation, which is kind of not so such a beautiful way to demonstrate that because one can argue that it's all cooked up in console. So here's a, like a more direct way to demonstrate this ballistic conduction. What if we compare conduction in a straight wire with a conduction in the wire with a turn? Of course, it's like super cartoonish uh, picture, but just to give you the idea that uh, in the straight wire, the nanowires, uh, so, sorry, the phonons are expected to travel without obstacle. Whereas in the bent wire, somehow phonons are expected to be scattered backward. And that should be, uh, should be detectable in our experiment. We should see that this one is kind of slower than this one. Uh, this was done actually by, um, in 2010 first, but only at ultra low, like sub Kelvin temperatures. But we were curious, like what if we do it at higher temperatures? Oops. Um, yeah. So uh, this is the experiment we did. So we fabricated a set of sample with so-called serpentine nanowire and straight nanowires. They both have the same length. So from diffusive point of view, they should be exactly the same, but from ballistic point of view, they should be different. Um, then we measured the, therm uh, the heat dissipation time. Remember I introduced the, this tau constant, like how quickly heat dissipates through these wires. And we can see that if we take a straight wire heat dissipates along the black curve, which is faster than serpentine curve, which is blue. In other words, through the straight wire, phonons can escape faster than from the band wire. Because, well, presumably because they're electrons, which scatter backward the phonons. Yes, um, so this is at 4K, but what happens if we increase the temperature? Now let's plot this uh, decay time on the y-axis and the uh, increased temperature. We can see a very interesting effect actually. Like at low temperature, as I mentioned, like black is below the blue. Blue means um, serpentine and black means straight. So straight is faster than serpentine. It's kind of semi-ballistic. As we increase temperature, the difference between them kind of almost disappears at 150K. But then what happens is even more interesting. They kind of cross. And then now at room temperature, actually this one, the serpentine one is faster than the straight. Uh, this is a trick called um, kind of corner cutting effect in diffusive regime. Here's a, some simulation in the purely diffusive regime. It shows that heat flux kind of follows the shortest path in the um, serpentine wire, which is kind of a slalom and a fa like faster than going through the whole straight wire, the full L, 
rather than here, it can actually cut the corner and go back, go out faster. So it becomes a faster at, in the diffusive regime than, you know, than at uh, low temperature. So, and um, the same thing can be demonstrated for, uh, as we make different structures of different uh, segment length. We kind of, this way we can probe kind of uh, at which length scale the ballistic conduction is strongest. Here we are probing uh, different length. It's a kind of, uh, this is a simulation to illustrate, but the data points are experimental. We can see that uh, the shorter we are, the more the difference here there is. Maybe it's not so obvious on this picture, so let's took, take a look at the next one. Uh, basically, here we can like calculate the thermal conductivity of one and the other, and uh, as a function of segment length, uh, we can see that, of course, thermal conductivity of uh, serpentine one will be lower than the strain, straight one. And, but as we increase this segment length, the difference kind of tends to become smaller and smaller because if it's, uh, the segment is too long, then it doesn't matter if some phonons are scattered backward because most phonons can still go through the whole segment like ballistically. And this is a way we can probe like a length scale of ballistic conduction, actually. This is what we did for different segment lengths and different temperatures. And we obtained the interesting plot. Uh, this plot shows kind of length and temperature scales of quasi-ballistic conduction in silicon, in silicon nanowire, strictly speaking. So here we simply plot a ratio of uh, straight nanowire to serpentine nanowire. I mean, this uh, therm their thermal conductivities. And uh, with one being diffusive limit. We, here with the blue, I highlight kind of diffusive limit and with the red the sort of uh, ballistic limit. And we can see that indeed, as we increase segment length, the points uh, tend to get down. So at 400, at the scale of 400 nanometer, ballisticity is stronger than at the scale of 800 nanometer. And the same happens in scale of temperature. As we increase temperature, all points tend to go down. And like above, uh, something like 200k, we were not able to detect any kind of sign of ballisticity using this method, this more direct method of probing. So the conclusion could be that we could not directly probe uh, any sign of ballistic conduction on the scale of 400 nanometers, but uh, in the previous experiment, we could still feel some weird resistance even at room temperature. Uh, little simulation, it, uh, it's a Monte Carlo simulation. It basically w aims to demonstrate like what is actually happening when we increase the temperature. Uh, these uh, maps show the scattering maps and the color of uh, the, each point. Each point, basically here, there's many, many points. Uh, probably you cannot see them separately, but you can see the overall color that they give the picture. So the blue color means diffusive, uh, like um, green color means specular, and pink color means like internal scattering, phone phone scattering. We can see that at 4K, everything is green, which means all the scattering types are specular, except those in the corner where the scattering type tends to be diffusive even at 4K. So the corners really kind of cut. But as we increase the temperature, the picture becomes more bluish, more diffusive and less green. And finally, as we keep increasing the temperature, the simulation shows us that the internal scattering starts to dominate heat conduction like above 100K. So that is why we have this temperature, um, temperature killing so quickly the ballistic conduction and most efficiently we see it at low temperature. Um, the final point that I want to make is another simulation that we did. It's a Monte Carlo simulation again, based on like particle view of phonon. So we represent each phonon as uh, just a line and uh, well, there are all necessary rules of scattering and everything, but the take out here, the take home message here is that uh, it seems like ballistic, I mean, heat conduction, let's say phone transport in nanowires can be seen as a levy walk rather than a random walk with bursts of diffuse scattering between the um, walls. And then once it gets a lucky direction, it can have a long leaps along the wire with some specular scatterings here. And then again, the leap of diffusive, a bunch of diffusive scatterings. So it's kind of a levy walk, short, like, you know, short walk, short walk, long, long step, long step, long step, short step, short step, like so. And this um, distribution of length of these steps 
basically proves the point that the Cauchy distribution is very typical for like lady-like process and the simulation shows that it's even better than the typical Cauchy distribution with very heavy tail for like long flight. So there are long leaps and short bursts of short like diffusive scatterings. Uh, so in other words, I, I'm trying to prove that um, in nanowires of realistic size, phonon conduction, phonon transport is something like a lady walk for phonons. Um, I guess we don't have so much time, so I will skip um, some parts. You can always um, uh, check it like on my website, for example, or on ResearchGate. Basically, what I wanted to um, say in this talk is that um, there's quasi-ballistic heat conduction in nanowires, as we could demonstrate it in straight nanowires by probing resistance, or in other words, thermal conductivity as a function of length. Uh, still, of course, we were not able to demonstrate anything like a perfectly 100% ballistic conduction because it's not really physically possible, I think it's at room temperature. Still, we could see some trace of ballistic conduction and we could probe it by two different methods, by the straight nanowire and by the bent uh, serpentine nanowire. Um, yes, and we probe the lengths and temperature ranges of this conduction. We could see that it's most efficient at low temperature, but that um, above 200k, it's barely visible at all. And, and it should be like below 400 nanometers in silicon where we are really able to see something. So it's not like microns or something as in some work. It's really hundreds of nanometers at best. And our simulations like it indicated and illustrated that it looks like phonons are following somehow lady walk uh, statistics. And uh, that basically explains why it never can be purely ballistic because sometimes there will always be diffusive scattering events like ever. Yes, so please, um, I didn't have time to present uh, our new work in silicon germanium nanowires where we also demonstrate the same thing as a function of um, germanium composition as a function of uh, like um, other parameters. It's very interesting, so check this one. And the other things, can be found in these references. Um, thank you very much. But uh, if we have no time, we can. I can really take questions in the chat. Let's say. Well, thank you very much. Please, uh, any questions? So, so, Raman, nice to see you. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, I would like. Um, to, to ask you, so, so uh, you show brilliant uh, experimental results, but you mm -hmm. haven't said uh, a word about what uh, is underlying mechanism. So what do you think, is it a quantum effect which is associated with the fact that at low temperatures, all the particles are in the ground state and only few are excited or is it uh, the lack of uh, unharmonicity? So what do you think, what is the mechanism? Mm -hmm. In some sense, yes, like at low, it's quantum in the sense that simply Bose-Einstein distribution, of course, shifts to the lower frequency range and like uh, the whole Planck distribution of phonons shifts to the lo low frequency, long wavelengths range. So it definitely helps to the ballistic conduction. But at 4K, of course, we are very far from the limit where any phonons are in the ground state or anything like this. It's uh, yes. regarding the quantum, I guess. And uh, regarding the unharmonicity, uh, indeed, like also phonon phonon scatterings are much weaker at low temperature, as I tried to show in the simulation. Basically, at 4K, we have nearly no internal scattering events, which can be, which is kind of unharmonic process, if we are talking about the same unharmonicity. So. Indeed, the role of unharmonicity is strong and the role of uh, quantum effect in the sense of wavelengths, dependence on temperature is, is very strong, is a main, main mechanism. Does it address your question? Uh, okay, Th thank you very much. Uh, uh, the talk actually is uh, really very interesting. I Myself, I also have some questions, but I'm afraid we are running out of time. So probably mm. I hope we will have chance to discuss it and now no uh, so once more thank you very much